sure you want to post that. It's going to be online forever. Okay, cool. Yay. Fuck Jules. Fuck Jules. Yeah, congrats on quitting. <laughs> and Thank you. Congrats to us for you being here. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> my today, pleasure. Today we have Dread with us. We have Dread. It's an in... honor, a pleasure. Oh, man. Yeah. Wait, you've been talked about a lot in this studio. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, people bring you up. Really? People bring you up. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm kind of speechless when I hear that kind of stuff. Really? You know I mean? Yeah. Cause I, I, I hear that, and I've been hearing it like a lot lately. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, damn, I've been around for a minute. What's going on lately? Your content obviously I'm, looks amazing. Well, uh, there's a lot of uh, good words said about, not that there were ever, ever any bad words, but it just seems like lately mm. there's a lot of dread talk going on. And mm. I like it. You know, I'm not complaining. <laughs> it's cool with me. Well, you're literally one of the easiest people to work with, and you're really fucking professional. Easiest minus maybe one factor for some people. One, but ti- one, one tiny One tiny really small detail. Right. <laughs> right. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like you're very, like, aware of that and, like, very much catered to making it a pleasant experience to people. Probably not in spite of that reason, but because of that reason. Right. Well, <laughs> that was all done by design, you know what I mean? Because... The game plan was never for me to be like, you know, content guy. You know what I mean? I never, when people first started telling me about it, I was like, what is that? It's not for me. Yeah. I'm not content guy. <laughs> and, you know, little did I know I would become content, content guy. King. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Well, content <laughs> king. You said that. I didn't say that. But, uh, <laughs> but so it, this whole professional thing, I mean, that's just the way I've operated all my life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I got into porn late. Mm-hmm. So prior to that, I was in like a professional work environment, like normal shit. What were you doing? I worked at a pharmaceutical company for a lot of Whoa. years. That's why I put most of my time in the regular workforce was this pharmaceutical company. And I just did various things there. Inside sales, outside sales, customer service, you know, logistic coordinator, all that bullshit. Mm-hmm. So my whole point is that I'm just used to doing things in a professional way. Right. So when I started do, when I became content guy, it was an easy kind of transition. You know, you're just punctual. You you know treat people with respect, and most importantly, performance is king. You know what I mean? We all know we want to have a high performance level. You know. So. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard through a good friend of mine, Lena Paul. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, I love her. Yes, we all do. Oh, yeah. She told me that you got your start in sex work, like, kind of before porn, by being hired <laughs> by cucks to fuck their wives. <laughs> and I need I know, to know more. your story's more. so crazy. If, you're, if you want to talk, I'd love to know more about oh, that. Oh, yeah. I'm always open to talk about that because that's a <laughs> that's a period of my life that I, like, had the most fun when I was in the lifestyle, you know, the whole swinging thing. And um, <laughs> I just got open to all kinds of different things, you know? How did you, like, start? Like, were a lot of people just asking you it to was do this? A, it's a good question. It was just a, a, a girl I was seeing who just uh. kind of mentioned to me, hey, you know, have you ever done anything in a lifestyle? I don't even know what you're talking about, you know? You know, like swinging, you know, with couples and stuff, you know? And I was like, no, and I ain't, I've never done that, and I don't really want to do that. She's like, oh, man, you'd do, you'd do great in that setting. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And she kept, like, asking me about it. And so I finally said, I said, all right, because, you know, I like to fuck a lot, you know. Mm. So I was like, okay, if it means more fuck time for me, count me in. So it, it took a little while to get used to that dynamic of, like, you know, performing in front of mm-hmm. a couple you know what I mean? Which I had never done, but I was like, I'll give it a shot. It took a little while, to, like riding a bike, learning to ride a bike. Once yeah. you kind of get it, you never forget it. So once I started doing that, yes, there was, I mean, not extreme cuck action. Uh, you know, I would draw the line. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like a, um, uh, you know, a lot, hey, you mind if we clean up? Actually, I do mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was never into the cleanup aspect, uh, but I have been in situations where some cuck stuff was going on, you know, and it was 
Look, I'm cool with whatever floats somebody's boat. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I just got what you meant by the cleanup. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got. Yeah. I got it. I you was like, I was like, they wanted you to clean your floor. No, no, no. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. They want. They want to get in. He wanted to get. He wanted, in. To, get he wanted in. to taste it. He wanted to taste it. <laughs> he wanted oh, yeah. to taste right. it. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> So you know, there was just it, yes, she's she's correct uh, about saying that, uh, you know. But um, yeah, the lifestyle. I think I don't know, maybe seven, eight, nine years strong. I was wow. deep into it. Yeah, wow. it was very stimulating too for a long period. I loved it. I loved it. And people would say to me, "Well, how much money did you make?" I was like, I don't, "No money. The pay was the fun." Yeah, wow. you know what I mean. And it wasn't just the sex. Yeah. You know, of course um, not. It was the the whole deal, the flirting, the interacting, the getting to know them, them getting to know me. Mm. You know, the sex was just the, the, the cherry on the top. You know what I mean? So um, and I just whether it was Miami or Texas or out here, I was getting flown out. You know what I mean? I was like, because, you know, so we're sick, you know, the lifestyle is mainly a couple's thing, you know. And so, you know, if you want to spice it up, you look into a good single guy. I would mm. say single girl, but they're very rare. You know mm -hmm. what they call them? The unicorns. Unicorn. Yeah. Right? So, but the single guys are like a dime a dozen. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's word of mouth. Oh, this single guy, he's good, you know? Yeah. So with me, again, going back to that whole professional way of handling myself, the word kind of got around, like in South Florida. Hey, this guy dread. <laughs> this, 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 he's you know, the one. This, this guy dread. Not only is he packing. But he's bringing, like, entertainment to the table. Great <laughs> conversation. You know what I mean? He's a, he's a good guy. So word just kind of got around, and I made my moves in that, you know? So that was just a wow. great, great time. Just the whole package with the biggest package. Right? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I've, I've never been one to say that. If you notice, if you look on any of my social media, I never say, I'm that guy. Other people say it, you know, and I'm I, I'm cool with it because in my mind, I'm like, look, OK, that may be true. Um, but at some point, another guy is going to come around who's swinging some ridiculous unit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then I, I won't be that guy. But so I've never really said it. But Leaned other people say it. This is what I think is one of the most like interesting things about you. And I was thinking about this interview because like so many men in the industry are very like oriented towards being an alpha and I feel like you are kind of like the ultimate alpha and that you're like I'm opting out of any of that actually yeah well you know why because I well first of all you know I'm an older guy you know I may look younger but I'm an older guy now and so when I was like a fan of porn the few guys that were around few you know that used to be the knock back then like oh you, you always see the same guys over and over again you know and that's because they just kind of were quiet handled their business let their actions speak for themselves. <laughs> Social media comes along. All these guys start, it's like inundated with all these guys. I, I'm a content creator. You know what I mean? They're coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> and what's coming with that is all this, uh, you know, braggadocious type, you know, I'm this, I'm that. I've never done that. I just kind of let yeah, my shit spe speak, let it speak yeah. for itself. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I mean, I could, I could, I think, I feel like I could hang with the best of them. You know, but I won't I won't say that. I just let it speak for itself. What has your like what has your like journey with your self-esteem been? Did you, have you always just been confident? Or is it something that's come with age? Oh wow, that's damn, you hit me with she's hit me with some good <laughs> both of you guys. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. shit. Um yes. Um well it's I kinda always had that, you know, and I think that goes back to you know, the the my time when I was like in the like sports, you know, like a sports thing, you know, we're number one, you know. So I kinda just kinda carried that over with when I started, um, for, for, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, like I'm better than him. You know, I wouldn't say that, but in my head, I'm like, I gotta, you know, I gotta step my game up. So I think I'm competitive uh, as, as far as that kind of thing goes. And I think I just kind of grew into it, mm -hmm. you know, pretty sure. I think that's what, it just comes across so seamlessly in your content. And I yes. think that that's like, everything speaks, your content speaks for yourself. Wow. And, I mean, I think that's why everybody has so much to say about you in a positive way because you're not coming out being like, Saying look it at for this yourself. fucking dick. Like, it just, everybody knows you and everyone knows what you do. Right, 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 right. Well, hey, you know what? It's a, it's a blessing. I appreciate it. I'm a very humble guy, you know, so it, it always means a lot to me when when people say that. But, you know, and again, like my, the, the whole content thing, it's just crazy how that all manifested because it just wasn't 
in the game plan, mm -hmm. you know? Like, in my mind, I was... I was just going on set, you know, like regular porn. Yeah. I was getting burnt out on it. I'm not going to lie to you. Were you filming a lot in your heyday? <laughs> not, <laughs> not, a, not a lot. Um, but, you know, I just always kind of had a, a thing for porn. Again, I discovered it at a really young, young age. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Very young. I, I think I got probably got you beat because I was like <laughs> seven. I mean, oh, okay. When I discovered it. Yeah. How did you discover it at seven? There were movies in your house? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I, <laughs> You're I, like, I, you ancient creature. What kind <laughs> of porn? <Right. laughs> no, that's not how I meant right. it. No, 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 I know. I know. <laughs> I, I, no, but it, it, it's, it's, there's truth to that. I mean, I, I discovered my um, my father's stash. You know what I mean? Of, and, of magazines? Yeah. And he had some raunch, man. Dad. He, he, dad wasn't messing with Penthouse and Playboy. Dad was messing with shit that didn't even have a, 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 a name on it. You know what I mean? You know, that, that dark shit. a black shit. cover. Right, a black cover. You open it up and you're like, Whoa. This was homemade. Right. Yeah, man, maybe. For all I know. I just know I was young and I found it. And This is like the dark web before the dark web existed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Really? This is back in the 70s. You know what I mean? And I just discovered it. And ever since then, it was like ingrained. So I always had a thing of... You know, when I get older, somehow I'm going to end up in that industry. You know what I mean? So that I do know what you mean. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. It's like, like, you know, other people, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, be an attorney or a doctor or whatever, a fireman, you know? <laughs> I would never say it, but in my head I was like, I want to get into porn. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, it was there even at a young age. And it just, as I grew, followed me. So once that opportunity came, um, I kind of just... Just, just ran with it, you know. Okay, what I mean? explain the opportunity because this shit is crazy. How did I get was into it? A it? Was it a radio show? Yes. Oh my god, yeah, that's another amazing story I've heard, and I can't wait to hear you talk oh, yeah. about it. <laughs> okay, I'll give you, I'll give you the scoop on that. So <laughs> I was um, just working my regular job at the pharmaceutical company. This is in uh, South Florida, and of course, it was always in the back of my head if if the right opportunity to shoot porn came up, uh -huh. I would do it. But you know, back then I was never ready to jump in all the way. I and I'm sure those opportunities are kind of far apart. Well, yeah, I mean, it's nothing like it is now. Yeah. Back then you had to know somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody mm -hmm. to maybe give you that opportunity. So I was always like, if the, if the opportunity comes up, and I would be ready. And I used to say, maybe I could wear a mask and disguise myself because mm -hmm. I didn't want everybody to know what I was doing because it was so shunned upon mm -hmm. back then. If you did any kind of adult stuff, you were like Broken. slime. Yeah. Right. So um, slime. Later on, <laughs> later on, <laughs> later on in life, um, I'm sitting there at the pharmaceutical company listening to um, a Howard Stern show. I used to listen to Howard all the time. That's crazy. Back, I'm old school with Howard, back in New York days. So I'm listening to him, satellite radio. I remember it like it was yesterday. And he was talking <laughs> to this guy, and they were um, talking about this competition, this contest, where they needed this new porn character. He had to have a lot of personality, right? Um, and he had to be packing. Just like, just hung. abnormally hung. So I was like, well, <laughs> shit, I, I feel like I'm pretty big. You know, I'm a pretty gregarious guy, <laughs> right? So I said, maybe this is that opportunity. So they said, look, if you think you're that guy, um, send take a few pictures, send them in to us, and we'll get back to you. And, you know, and there's this contest. You know, it's going to be done on the Stern show to anoint the new character. So I'm sitting there at my office, and I said, "You know what? <laughs> Fuck it. This is it. This is this is my shot." And then went into the bathroom, took my little. Back then, it was like a little. The phones weren't as advanced as as advanced as they are now, but they were able to take pictures. God damn it! You could get the point across, right? <laughs> so I went in the bathroom, chubbed up, and took, <laughs> took a few shots. You know, put, sent them into the email address, and the next day, the guy called me. He says, "Dude, you're the guy." He said. Said, stop the press. We've been looking at dicks all day. <laughs> You're the one. You are the one. And I, and I was stunned. I was like, really? Me? And he's like, yep. And I said, okay. Well, I said, that's good news. I said, what do we do now? And he said, well, we want to fly you out here, see how you do in front of the to camera. LA. Yeah, to LA. Fly you out here to LA, see how you do in front of the camera. If you do good, we are going to go on the Stern show and anoint you as the new guy. So I was like, 
I said, you know, that all sounds good, but I can't, because I wasn't ready to jump in the pool like that. You know what I mean? I wasn't ready. So I said, what about the just fly me out part and let's see how I do, you know? <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's, that's part of the deal. So I said, I got to turn you down, you know? So, <gasps> yeah, so I did. And then- you Oh, know, you didn't do it at all? I didn't do it. Wow. A couple days later, he called me back. He said, hey, you changed your mind? I said, no. I said, you change yours? No, 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 okay. So we played that game for a <laughs> few weeks and then he called me and he said, look, I'll tell you what, forget the Stern Show. Let's just fly you out here and see how you do. So I said, okay, now you're talking. So I got ready, prepared, flew out. And I'm thinking it's just gonna be like me, a girl, and a guy. I walked into a full-fledged, full-blown set, you know? Mm -hmm. Picked me up from the airport, we went straight to a shoot house. And I, when we were pulling up, there were like 10 cars outside. And I said, we're going there? <laughs> And he said, yeah, that's where we're going. I said, are you serious? I said, what is this? He said, no, we're going to shoot some porn, man. And I was like, oh, God. So the nerves kicked in, you know? And I walked in, and I'll never forget. Everybody was like, there he is. There's the man. This is before I even did anything, you know? They were just going off the pictures I sent them. So, you know, I, and I think they were just trying to, like, get me going. But it didn't it was work. The opposite <laughs> it was effect. the opposite. Because I struggled, you know what I mean? It was a struggle, man, you know? It's and terrifying. It was beyond terrifying. <laughs> And I was like sitting there in a the corner and people now, at first it was the, there's the man, you know, we're going to do this today. And then as I'm struggling, they're going, hey, you think he's going to get it? You think he's going to do it? And I'm like, oh shit, please, <laughs> you know, trying my best. And nothing was happening, you know, and the girl's like looking at her phone and shit. So um, oh. we got it done, but it was a struggle. And um, they pressed that. And that was like the first wow. dread porn, you know? And then... Did you disappear after that? Yeah, because I only <laughs> shot about 15 scenes because I didn't like it. I okay. was like, this ain't this ain't what I thought it was. Mm. Um, this isn't going to work. I'm not this guy. I thought I could be, but I'm not. I'm glad I got a chance to experience it. But um, that was that, you know? It was just too overwhelming feeling? Oh, yeah. yeah. I couldn't get it. It was it was just too tough, and I didn't real and, and you know it's like it is now. You know it's it's hard to do that. Mm -hmm. It really is to perform in front of people. You know what I mean? So um, I quit, and that was two thousand nine. So two thousand ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen is when I came back. You know what I mean? So it's a little deceiving when people go, how long have you been in the game? So I have to like total up, you know, though, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not, people think I've been in it. It's not smooth sailing the whole time. No, yeah. no, 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 no. What'd you do between 2009 and 2015? Excellent question. <laughs> That's where I honed my whole craft in with the lifestyle. That's when I jumped in deep. Mm. And now I got comfortable, you know, mm -hmm. performing in front of people. Cause a lot of those situations in the lifestyle, husbands or boyfriends that say, hey, you mind if we record this or if we capture some of it? No, I don't mind, you know? Mm -hmm. While I'm focused on doing what I'm doing, they're kind of floating around and I just- Develop. Yeah, and I got comfortable. And then I would go to parties, you know, and people would be, you know, waiting. Hey, there he is, you know, and <laughs> here's my wife, you know, and it'd be like a line, you know, of like couples waiting to come on the bed and I'm on the bed and I'm sweating, you know, and just like fucking my yeah, brains like, out. We've been stretching them out. They're oh, all yeah. ready to go. Oh, yeah. No, this is true. No, it was really like that. And so wow. now when I got back in 2015 um, and I got back in begrudgingly, you know, it was a girl I was talking to down there who was making a lot of money and I was like broke. And she was like, why don't you just get back in the porn, you know? And I was like, ah, that's, I'm done with that. That's, I'm not. He's like, oh, well, you, you, you're busy doing all this lifestyle stuff. Why not make money? And so we just went back and forth for a while about that. And then I finally gave in. And she said, let me just start you a, a Twitter page. Because I didn't, I wasn't active on social media, nothing. So let me just do that and let's see what happens. So I said, all right, you know, go ahead, let's see. And then once she did that in 2015, the floodgates were open. Cause it was like, hey, the world Dick, knows now, <laughs> right? It goes dread. Where's he been? He's back, you know. Let's let's see what what he's up to, and then that's when like it, the whole porn run started. Fuck. Yeah. Has, <laughs> has porn kind of replaced like the role that the lifestyle was playing in your life, or are you, do you still dabble? Well, content is fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Content reminds me of lifestyle yeah. stuff, you know. That makes a lot. Of in sense. fact, every now and then, once in a while, I'll get. A couple 
who are like lifestyle, but who have transitioned into content people and they'll go, Hey, you want to, you know, I don't do it a lot only because I feel like I've kind of closed that book, that chapter on dealing with, you know, husbands and wives and, you know, I'm sure there are some, some funny ones. Oh God, we could, <laughs> I, we'd be talking until the sun comes up tomorrow. I can tell you guys so much shit, but, um, so every now and then I'll, I'll do it, but, uh, to answer the question, content is reminiscent of it because of the fun. You mm -hmm. know, I remember that feeling in the lifestyle of like when you were done and it's like a great night and everybody's just happy. Everybody's smiling. Everybody's like, damn, we got to do that again. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? When I'm on a set now, I really shouldn't say this. It's kind of fucked up. But when I'm on a set now, it's not really. It's work. Content mm -hmm. is 100 times more fun than being on set, yeah. in my opinion. It is. Me, if I'm being honest. You're right. It can be fun. But for me, and I think it's just because of uh, how old I am now, like being on set, it's just, I really shouldn't say this. It, it's, it's still fun in it, but it's just work, you know? And I'm at a point now it's where- It's like a whole day. Yes. That you're easily. not in your house. Right. <laughs> like exactly. in my house. I'd rather make a lot of money, um, <laughs> shoot on my own schedule, shoot with people that are cool, that I could vibe with, mm -hmm. that I feel like we would have some great- energy and great sex and let's put it out there for people to enjoy you know mm -hmm. and let's me and you make the money on that that's where i'm at with kind that. of unbeatable you can't you can't <laughs> it doesn't even compare in my mind but i i'll still do it uh i will do i'll go on set um but not a lot are you still only with the jewels mm -hmm. nice yeah and it's cool. And again, he's the guy, you know, I always talk him up. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I like the way he, he shoots. Um, I think he's the best. And, um, you know, we've kind of built something up, you know, but he had prior to me, cause it was like a thing. Like when I got back in, there was like, a, okay, um, who wants to get this guy dread? You know what I mean? There were mm -hmm. like studios who were like, we want to get him. in the water. Yeah. Right, you know? <laughs> and he had that, he had the leverage because he had shot with a guy who was my idol, Lexington Steel, right? He shot with him. He shot with Mandingo, who was, in, these are like big dick guys. And so his pitch was, look, you'll continue, we're passing the mantle, I mean, the baton off to you, you know? <laughs> so I was like, bet, you know, say no more, I'm in. And that's how it really all kind of got going. And that's how, you know, why it still is what it is right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Yeah. Can you imagine being like known and desperately sought after for having like the tightest pussy on the internet? Um, yes, because that's <laughs> what I experienced. <laughs> You're like, that is me. Yeah, I'm known for yeah. my extra tight pussy. I really. So <laughs> I've I've broken a dick before, Dread. No and, shit. Yeah, and is it true that like the bigger the dick is, the l higher chances of it breaking? You know, I'm always careful about that because I've heard stories about the dick breaking thing. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know. I worry about it because I have a wicked curve, you mm -hmm. know? And if a girl is riding me and she's like on that giddy up, like I want, I'm gonna get it. I gotta be real careful with that. Because of my curve, she's, the giddy up has to be just one right. One wrong move. Oh, one wrong yeah. move, that's a wrap. It, that seriously. curve is snapped. Can you imagine breaking yeah. Dred's dick? Oh my God. That would be fucked up. Yeah, you should get it insured. So up. Yeah. Just, yeah, do you have it insured? No, it's not insured. It's oh. not insured. He's too humble I'm for just, that. I'm just really <laughs> careful. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, when the in, when the right opportunity is there, I will do my thing. But I got to be careful because that broken dick shit is real, man. It's real. It's terrifying. Emergency surgery is required. What and that happened to you? Yeah. It happened. It happened to me. Was mm -hmm. the guy like bleeding and stuff? No, he <sighs> wasn't bleeding, but his whole dick turned purple oh. and his balls and like his asshole was all purple. Everything was purple because you, so, so obviously greedy? if you think about a flaccid dick, you can't break that shit. Let's get real. But the columns create it. So like there's two columns of blood oh. and it, it broke the columns. Wow. So the blood, so the just... blood went everywhere. Oh my God. And I heard it pop. Oh, I heard it snap. And then it looked like a lightning bolt. And I didn't know that you could actually break a dick. He knew, and you know your own body, he knew it was fucked. He was like, oh my God. it's broken, I need to get emergency surgery. Oh. And we had like a bunch of threesomes planned and like a lot of scenes planned and we were in New York City, thank God, that we weren't in like um, 
a more rural area. They got dick breaking specialists in New York City. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank I love New York City, by the way. Yeah. I lived there for a little while. You did? Yeah. I was going to say, there, I heard right? you say Wicked Curve. I was like, you're from the East. You're from North, oh, New England. No, 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 no. I was born <laughs> and raised in New York, right? Uh, I was born in the Bronx, then moved out to Long Island. But then um, I lived with my brother for about a year right on Mulberry Street where the San Gennaro Fest is, you know, that Italian festival. They have a huge Italian festival in mm. September, the San Gennaro Fest. And it's like... On Long Island? No, in uh, Mulberry Street in Manhattan. In Manhattan. Uh, uh, lower Manhattan. And it's just like Italian food. If you like Italian food, oh my God, you got to go to that. Yummy. And, and we lived uh, right on Mulberry, which is the block that it's on. So, um, you know, the smells, you know, when you got the window open, mm. real New York shit. You know what I mean? Uh, just that aroma of like all the Italian food and shit. But yeah, once you mentioned New York, I kind of lost it because I'll always. New York, <laughs> New York is home. Is New York not New England? I yeah, always no. consider everyone's saying no. I think. No. Is it not? No. Oh. People are. I, I just consider it to be like everything mm. in that quadrant. Right. But I know that it's not. Right. But. Yeah. You are like the if if someone was like picture someone who was born in the Bronx in the seventies and now he's like really fucking cool. I, I feel like you're like the quintessential oh, sure. <laughs> cool right. New York oh, guy. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. No, it's um yeah that was me in the early seventies uh, in the Bronx. Um, but you know when you mention the Bronx like back then people think you know run down burnt down shit that was more like the South Bronx you mm. know where I was in the Bronx it was like more like the North Bronx it was it was it was normal you yeah. know because sometimes I say to people I was born and raised in the Bronx in the seventies like, oh I'm so sorry I'm like no I was chilling yeah I was chilling <laughs> I was good you know I was, was having really. fun and shit you know <laughs> so yeah New York and then um down to I don't know maybe when I was about like seventeen down to Florida you know. Do you like Florida? I like LA more. Yeah. I like it here. LA rules. Yeah. I like it. And I mean, I, I talk to people all the time that are like, I'm so over it. I'm done with it. I'm moving, you know, whatever. I'm like, I like it, man, because I'm an East Coast guy. Mm -hmm. So this is just different. The scenery is different. The people are different. And I know, you know, a lot of people say LA people, you know, a lot of them are you know, fake, whatever. I get that. But, um, I'm just caught up in it because it's just different, you know? It's just something that I am i wasn't used to. Mm -hmm. So the novelty hasn't worn off mm -hmm. of it, you know what I mean? So I like it. You know, I'm gonna, I, I, I think I'm going to be here for, the, for, for a long time. Are you an adventurous person? Do you go out and explore the city type of shit? Not really. No. You know something? Just coming <laughs> here today. Adventure. Adventure. Mm -hmm. I'm a reclusive guy, man. I don't do too much. I don't really don't... Yeah, like a turtle who doesn't come out of his shell. Oh, yeah, that's me. I don't. I don't do a lot. Do you like have scary super fans? Yes. I feel like you. Your vibe could cultivate that. <gasps> I, yeah. I mean, I don't. Not I don't that know. it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, I don't. You know, I just try to be a, a, a normal guy, man. Your fans just, are fucking ravenous. Like when I filmed with you, so many dudes being like, "Please say you did Anna with dread. I please, know. please, please." We tried it. <laughs> We did try. I know. That wasn't that wasn't my wasn't, the day for my ball. She meant said the story about like coming in just so cocky, like yeah. I got this. Yeah. It's gonna be I'm confident. a size queen, my ass is open. She, she tried. And then that's how I go through life. I'm like, I can do anything. And then sometimes you're faced with the fact that it's maybe yeah. you can't. Maybe it's okay. physically no. impossible. Yeah. Today. <laughs> yeah. And you know what though? I had so much respect for you having that attitude. Like, you know what? Let's 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 try it. Like, cause I think I knew that it wasn't like your thing. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I knew at the time, like, anal wasn't your thing. But you were like, you know what? I, I think I'll, let's do it. Let's go for it. And um, so I, I applauded you for that. Even though it didn't work, I was respect for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had respect for you for you just had a really good attitude about it, too. Yeah, I, I do. In my in my defense, I do do a lot of anal, but I don't do oh, anal with damn. with dicks that big. <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. never shot an anal scene. What? And I was just thinking, like, what if... I first popped my scene. first <laughs> anal scene with Tread. You should. I, I think it would, it would be better in my ass than in, in my pussy, me I too. think. Yeah. You want to know? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like yeah, me too. <laughs> no, but, but seriously, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something, right? And I'm not just saying this it, to make it sound good, but there are quite a few girls that are like anal only with me. Because mm. there's this thing, they're like, because of your size, like my pussy just can't, adapt to it but my ass can so i'm like okay and believe it that's there's a lot of truth to that those girls are winning yeah for sure yeah <laughs> yeah that's amazing let's talk about buttholes okay 
Butthole talk. Buttholes. I love it. I know. I, I know you love buttholes, and I love eating ass. I love. Oh, beautiful buttholes. <laughs> we gotta shoot. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> I do love eating ass so much. Like mm. it's just so much Damn. fun. I've never like gone to one and it was unappealing either. I've just had good luck with it. Also, people are professional, I guess, and I'm picky with right. who I work with. But I think it's really fun. Right. You do. You, would you rather have your ass eaten or eat ass? If I could only pick one for the rest of my life situation. Yeah. That's literally the hardest question I've ever been asked. I am life. just realizing that too. It's really hard. I'm. <laughs> Come on, I'm, it's not that hard. I got. He, I know, I know what answer. you're gonna say. You want your ass ate. You want your ass ate. Both wrong. Oh, Whoa. I think I'm with yeah. you. Now, okay, okay. Now, just to go back to the question, you're just talking about if it's a thing, you know, lasting for the rest of my I'm life shocked. type thing. Yeah. Either having it done to me or me doing it to someone. Oh, I'm doing it to someone mm. for sure. Because let me tell you, girls, something. Um, <laughs> With anal, number one, the main thing, because people go, man, why are you so caught up in anal? You know what I mean? Especially with your size. Because I've seen what it can do uh, from a pleasure angle with 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 girls. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Girls who maybe had a bad experience with it or it's just not their thing. And I'm like, look, let's just try it. Just give it a shot. And I've seen that pleasure that different orgasm that comes from it that they don't get yeah. from vaginal. That shit is real. You, mm -hmm. got, you girls know. I think that it's like, it's a sh like, uh, this is the wrong word to use. I'm just going to say spiritual. It's a spiritual experience, anal is. Like it, it, it unlocks something in you that you're able to like, Go to a different dimension. It's like space travel, right. astral travel, <laughs> right? Astral right. travel. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, it's special. And um, I, it's just it's special, like you said, and it's just something. It's just like wrong. You know what so I mean? Naughty. And that's what the turn on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. And it's like, oh, but I'm gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like that whole thing. And I've had that kind of take going back since I was a kid. Because, of course, in my father's stash, there was a lot of anal shit. I remember that. You know what I mean? And so anal was always a theme <laughs> with me, you know. But, um, yeah, I, don't get me wrong. I like pleasuring girls as many ways as possible. But I really get t I really turn up when it's a girl who's like, you know, I'm not really big on anal. And then we do it. And then, then they're like, oh, my God. I never thought I'd feel that way from that. I can't believe I came that hard from that. It actually yes. felt great. You know what I mean? And I'm like. Thank you. Yes. Right. Put on this earth. You have a purpose. You can't beat that feeling. <laughs> you can't. I've heard that butthole feels much more smooth and like a tube than pussy. Can you confirm or um, deny? Um, I think there's some truth to that. Um, you know, I've only heard that from one person, so I am genuinely asking. I, you know, I don't. I, I can't really say either way for a fact, um, but I think there is some truth to it. Um, I just had, had a threesome yesterday where it was just all anal. And what wow. you described before, that going to that place in time, yeah. it was like that with both of them. You know what wow. I mean? And I was just like, everybody, all, we were all like, damn, you know? Because <laughs> it was just so great, you know? When so, you're done and you're just like, oh, yeah. all laid out. Oh, it was beautiful. Wow. But, but yeah, no, I, I love it. Um, but again, some people look at me and they think I'm crazy. Like, because I'm like, yeah, anal's like a main thing for me. It's not a make or break type thing. Like if I shoot with a girl and she's like, look, anal's not my thing. I know you're into it, but you ain't getting that today. I'm like, okay, that's fine. That's not, it's not make or break. But um, I do like it a lot. Yeah, mm. I do. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating to me that anal has so much, I feel like more of a uh, impact on people's psyches in a way, even totally. though it's like, it's a hole and it's right there next to the pussy, but it's like a different world. Right. To it's a different world because like, you there's know, there's so much out. shame ab around pooping. Yeah. And that's, right. that's what it's connected to, right. obviously. Right. Yeah. It's something that's very, very naughty. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, like the, the thing about it, you know, yeah. the naughtiness of it. Yeah. The wrongness of it. You know and what I mean? I also, I think a lot of guys do get off on anal because, and, and I've been told this because, they they know it's more for their pleasure than for the girl's pleasure, or that's their conception of it. So I think it's really cool that you are seeing it as this like portal into actually like a lot more pleasure. I've yes. never so. had that experience with anal, like specific. Maybe I don't know. I had the most amount of anal that I had was as a teenager in high school. Oh. Just Catholicism. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, my boyfriend was just really freaky. And at the time, like, anal wasn't really on the menu. Like, it wasn't those things that people were talking about. So to say, like, oh, yeah, we have anal all the time. It was just insane. People thought we were fucking crazy. And now it's like everybody, everybody does anal. Everybody eats ass. Like, I feel like ever since, like, 2016, (laughs) anal has, butthole is right up there on the the appetizer menu. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Eat ass or die. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Truly. Truly. Well, anal's become a thing, you know. It, uh, clearly, obviously, I don't know exactly when it became a thing, um, but I remember going back into the days when, you know, it was VHS tapes, and you'd go into a video store, you know, and where's the adult section? It's in the back, mm-hmm. and it's in a little corner, and you pull a curtain back, and you go in there, mm-hmm. and it's about, you know, as, as big as <laughs> right here, you know what I mean? And where's the anal? Oh, it's that last shelf down there. You know what I mean? Yeah. This was back then. But now it's become this monster, yeah. you know, for anal. Like a lot of girls' careers are dictated on if they do it or not. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, look, I'm glad that it's gotten to this place that it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, And I hope it, it stays. And it's just like what a- eating ass. That never used to be a thing. But now it is. Yeah. And I don't know when that switch went, you know, went on. But, um, you know. Now, look, when I'm with ass eating, I'm very cut and dry with it when it's done on me. I don't, there's not multiple scenarios. I'm just kind of like a legs up kind of guy, you know. <laughs> I'm not a turned around and back is arched and <laughs> cheeks are spread kind of guy. Um, yeah, because that's just me. I'm comfortable with that, and I have my pleasure with it when it's done that way. So that's mm-hmm. – I'm not really an extreme guy with it. You know what I mean? So You are like – I don't know. You come across as just some someone who's like things are like simple to you, and it's like I want to do this. I don't want to do this. I'm in touch with that part of myself. It's like – I don't know. Even like your whole story just seems like you have really strong intuition and like you always have. I appreciate you saying that, and I, you know, I I don't know. I just feel like a guy who got really lucky in life, <laughs> you know, and um, mm-hmm. I just keep that, you know, to my heart. You know what I'm saying? I never, like, lose uh, sight of the fact that, like, this almost didn't happen. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It really, only uh, this close to me not even sitting here talking to you guys about this shit, um, if it wasn't for that girl back in 2015 i wouldn't be here was that your long-term boo no oh it's a different boo. different boo (laughs) this girl i was seeing on the side (laughs) kind of thing (laughs) i love it and and she she was cool and um i just remember she was making a lot of money doing like webcam stuff and like i said i was struggling and i was like what am I missing here? And she's like, well, I'm going to tell you. And she's the one who, like, really. You're broke, right, honey. You know, she's the one who pulled me up and, like, said, look, this is what you need to do. This is your calling, you know. I mean, I, for months, we went back and forth where I was like, no, you know. And so she finally got me to, to, to you know, like, I gave in and, and so thankful that it happened. So I think that just has, like, followed me, you know, and that whole perception, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And. Um, that, that I think ties into what you were saying about the whole, uh, intuitive thing and all that kind of stuff, you know? So it's funny, those people that just kind of show up at the right moment in your life yeah. and just little like mystical people we get that send us all the signals about where we're supposed to go, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. That is so true. Right place, right time. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was, um, that was something they talked a lot about when I was working in wilderness therapy because they were like, you know, you feel like when you're talking to these kids who are, they're teenagers, they're learning about life, they're making mistakes, and you, all of us feel like we're maybe not doing the best we can sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, I could have been doing so much better with those kids, but it's like, you have no fucking idea. Like, these strange little things that you might say that just, like, come up in someone's head, like, three years later and totally change their lives type of shit. Totally. Mm -hmm. For sure. We all have such bigger impacts than Mm -hmm. we could ever imagine. And especially with us, with having online presence, we have no idea how much impact we have because not everybody is in the DMs telling telling us about it. Most people don't. And we really don't understand the ripple effect that each of us have separately and together right now being in this room. (laughs) Right, right, right. It's a lot. There's a lot that we do. Shit. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, the the, the, the things we do, uh, whether we realize it or not, are pretty impactful on people. And again, the, the just the whole social media thing, you know, with where we are, you know, nowadays. I mean, I was just talking about this yesterday. 
like about how like back in the day, if you were like, you know, porn star and you're doing your thing, uh, you were almost like a, a mythical, yeah, you know, uh, thing. untouchable, untouchable. You had this shield in front of you, which was kind of like a good thing. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, you would have to sign up to their newsletter or something, you know, and send them a, a, a <laughs> mail, write a letter and shit. Hey, I like you. You're my favorite. Nowadays, you can just get online and it's so you're so accessible, you know. And, so, and it's like about breaking that down and making people feel like they're in your life. That is like right. so much of what we do. Right. Now, look, I still don't know to this day if it's a really good thing or a really bad thing. I don't know if that accessibility is. It's just, it's different. It's mm -hmm. not what it used to be, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I think that polarity always exists. So as, as something is becoming more prevalent, like internet all the time, there's good and bad that comes with it. Right. But we just don't know. It's like, what, you know, how they were doing so much coke in the 80s. No one knew how bad it was. Like, I don't know. I think it's going to be one of those things, like always hindsight. People are going right. to be like, oh, fuck. Well, but, and I think in porn that it's really magnified because like so much of what attracts us sexually as people is like novelty and taboo. So as those as things become less novel or less taboo just from virtue of seeing them all the time, such right. as anal, like what's mm -hmm. going to get you off now? Right. Yes. And porn is like a microcosm of reality, basically. And it's like encapsulating certain time periods. Right. Like you can see trends like sociologically mm -hmm. in porn throughout the years because it's a mirror. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, ever fucking step stepsister mm. porn went crazy. And then like anal is normal. Right. And everything that was super taboo is becoming more mainstream. Mm -hmm. So is vanilla porn going to be like the right? biggest thing in like five years? Like we don't know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to topple over. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Full sure. circle. Yeah. The time's a flat circle. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Well, where where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? 10 years. Well, you know what? I still got some some gas in my tank. Hell yeah. It you shows. know what I mean? Yeah, I still got some. It's still there. Um, so I'm figuring... I could do this easily. Now, health, of course, is is key. Health is wealth, you know what I mean? And I'm trying, you know, it's a never ending process, you know, um, of just keeping yourself right. Like I'm in the process now of getting back to where I was like a few years ago. I was tight back then. Kind of slipped a little bit, but it's all right. <laughs> but uh, health is wealth. And so if that being said, I could go like, until I'm 60, I think, mm. 60. You know, there are a couple of performers right now, you know, that are in 60, you know. Um, Fuck. That's amazing. Because there are some young male talent, like 19-year-old, 20-year-olds that are already shooting their Burning dicks themselves up. out. Yeah. And, like, they're going to be burnt out in a couple of years. Mm. You know? I was discussing this recently, that whole angle. Again, you know, it's it, because of the times we're in right now. It's so easy, you know, for a guy like... What I had to deal with, those nerves of like, oh, shit, all these people in here, man, I got to focus on the, on what I'm doing. The shot, you do that shit, and you can go and fuck in the snow. Right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> pouring rain, run yeah. out there, dick pointing up to the ceiling. You know what I'm saying? Damn. And it's just... It, There's not that barrier to entry that anymore. Gone. Yeah. So the floodgates are Dark. open. Right. But like you said, that shit could catch up to you. Don't work forever. Mm -mm. Right. Yeah. You know? It's like a quick fix, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's why, and I said this on a, another podcast I did, I got so much respect for those old school guys, man, you know? Back when it was like, you know, shooting on the side of a building and there's like a bunch of people <laughs> and you're trying to hurry up so nobody sees you and you got to have your shit right and you got to, mm -hmm. you know, like at the drop of a dime, you got to do it. And they did it, you know what I mean? Athletes. Oh, my God. So a lot of respect for those guys. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's crazy now. Like I said, it's wide open, you know, people do whatever. I, I really like that making sexual content keeps my hygiene and my health really fucking in line compared mm. to what it used to be. Cause I'm like, I have to be clean. I have to be healthy enough to be able to throw it back for long periods of time. Mm. <laughs> it's great. Right. I like it. It really organizes my life, which you're, I appreciate. You're, I'm going to tell you right now, you're really good. You know that? No, seriously. I'm thinking about, as you were saying, I was thinking about. You got some flashbacks. The, yeah. Throwing it back. Right. <laughs> I, exactly. Mm -hmm. I had a flashback to the one-on-one -on -one and then what we did recently uh -huh. with um, Emma. Yeah. 
Um, and that was great. And um, and yeah, no, you you got it down. Thanks, man. Oh yeah, appreciate it. Hell yeah, I love big dicks, so that you make it easy. Damn. <laughs> I remember it was like a while ago, and after you had just shot y'all's one on one, and you and I had spoken to each other only a couple of times, and you were just like. Do you want to see my scene with Dread? And Literally, I was just I'll like, show fuck anyone. yeah. And, and you were just like so <laughs> in love with it. And I think wow. that I really appreciate like size queens just because it, it kind of goes against like what we were taught as women, like to be like, no, like you're tiny and you can be better. Anything is perfect. Right, Whatever. Right. And you're like, I want the biggest fucking dick ever. I want it to be inside me, up into my throat, like whatever. Yeah. And I just I just love that about you. And you were so excited about the scene and it was so cute. And you just like, you were watching it on repeat, basically. <laughs> I have shown this to civilians in my life since, because we filmed that in like January, I want to say. Oof, earlier yeah. this year, yeah. which is crazy, because it was one of my first like, more professional dude scenes right. ever. Yes, yes. And I've definitely showed it to some civilians, like who are friends, who were like, I didn't need to see that right now. No I, sorry. I have learned for, for a long time, even with like burlesque or stripping or to have whatever, mm -hmm. that like a lot of my friends just aren't really down. And that's okay. And like, it makes sense. And I want to show my friends all my porn. And some of them are down and some of them are not. And I had to like learn that boundary. I've had to learn boundaries in, gen yes. in general, right. but that was an important one. Yeah, I'm like, mm. I just made y'all really uncomfortable. Yeah, because in my brain, I can't think of like why I wouldn't want to see anybody's porn or anybody's work <laughs> right, that right, they right. want to show. And right. sometimes I feel like it's unfair that we we don't get to brag or like show our work <laughs> mm. to our parents. <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> not really. <laughs> and just to anybody, like you know, any other profession can do. Like right, they right, get to right. talk about work all the time and it's fine, but I can't because yeah. y'all's sexual energy is fucked up. Whatever. Mm. <laughs> Literally, you're a baker. You're giving your friends free bread all the fucking time. Right. right. Oh, you want to slide people. Oh, just the videos. Yeah. But they're like, <laughs> I want to show them my bread. Sli <laughs> <laughs> slide into this bread. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. Cute. Mm. <sighs> Do you have any questions for for old Dreddles? 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 Dreddles. That's an original one. <laughs> I've never heard that it's before, but I like nickname. it. You do like it? I like it. Did Cute. you get your how do you get your name? Your terrifying name? You know, uh people ask me that and um I it, it was just like a knee jerk thing, you know. Some people said he's He's a Judge Dredd fan. I've never even seen the movie. I don't know. Judge Dredd, what is that? Some science fiction <laughs> movie. You know, Sylvester Stallone. I'm like, no, I've never seen the movie, and that's not why I have the name. Okay. So, um, oh, maybe it's because girls will dread the size. Right. Like, that's <gasps> not it either. No. And then they go, really? Maybe it's the dread, the hair, the dreads, right? That kind of no, it's not that either. So it's none of those things. Okay. It's just a, a, a reaction. It was. I remember it. I was uh, when I went out when I flew out, you know, out here for the first time. And he said, "What are you going to call yourself?" And I just dread just came out of nowhere. Oof, interesting. Yeah. I feel like you are just you are tapped in yeah. to your blueprint of life. Like you knew <laughs> to take time away because right. you knew it was going to, and then you became more comfortable, and you right. and you knew that there were going to be these opportunities, and then you d denied them because you knew the right one was going to come. Like it's it's. It's beautiful. You know what? The way life is, I believe in, again, the things happening for a reason, right? If what's happening to me now happened to me when I was in my 20s, mm -hmm. I would have fucked everything up. You know what I mean? Because I was irresponsible. I wasn't just, you know, capable of handling what's going on. Like right now, like shit it for me is, I'm like, wow, you know what I mean? I wake up some mornings and I'm like, I still can't believe this is happening to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so... Um, that being said, I never would have been able to deal with it. So the fact that this is happening later on in life and I could process it and be smart about it and be responsible, you know, and do things the right way happened for a reason. Fucking rules. I think that we all kind of have that in common because we could have started porn at 18, but we both started at like 26 mm -hmm. or 25. 25 yeah. yeah. And I think like, you know, your brain is fully developed at 25. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. But, right. you know, we would have been extremely different people if we had started at 18 mm. and you would have been very different if you had just like started and just oh. kept going and, and, yeah. and pushed through it and everything. So I think we all kind of waited until it was the right time right. for us, which is great. Yeah. 
We're smarter than other people. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just kidding. <laughs> no. Oh, I wanted to know, Dred, what did your, was your like, was your family even involved with your like oh. process of like I'm in porn now or not? Uh, you know what? Once I, in 2009, when I uh, flew out here and did those, those couple things, I figured, let me tell him. Because I knew my my father was a freak. <laughs> he's gonna see it. Why? Yeah. Right. <laughs> he, he's still he's, gonna see he's it. a freak his whole life, and he was still like going to the adult video stores. Are they, and, were they married? Oh Apple? yeah, that's awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. So I didn't want to run the risk of him just you know <laughs> going in there to you know get his own rocks off and see me on a box <laughs> cover and go wait a minute. <laughs> the hell is this you know so i <laughs> so i i um i just, just broke it down to him man when i flew back i i was like listen i went to both of them sat them down i said i'm not even going to hold back on this i said look this is what i'm getting into you know and you're a grown ass man at this point as well absolutely yeah and my mother was i could see the shame mm. uh i could see the damn you know, and then, and then my um, my uh, my father said, "Oh, man, how could you do that?" You know, and I said, "Look, it's just it is what it is, Dad." You know, and he tried to give it to me for a little bit, and I was just you know taking it, absorbing it, and um, he said, "Look, let me talk to you out of here." I said, All right. so I got up. You know, I felt like a little kid. I was like a teenager again. But like you said, I'm like a grown man and shit. But I got my head down, following him outside. I remember like it was yesterday, and we went outside. I'm like, "All right, give it to me." And he says, "What's it like being with those girls?" You know? Oh I mean, my is it, god! Is so it really jealous cool? of you? Right, right, right. And I'm looking to see if mom's looking. I'm like, "I'm like, well, listen, this is what you know." Now we're having a whole different dynamic of a discussion. You wow. know what I mean? But but yeah. So um, no, I had. There was no issues with that. Their thing was just, look, if you're making good money and, you know, you're safe, um, do your thing, you Aww. know? So I always had that kind of support, you know, from everybody. You know, I never had to, like, conceal it, which is a journey that a lot of people go through mm -hmm. when they get it. As you girls know, you know, there's a lot of, oh, yeah. man, if they find out, you know, I got to do this undercover kind of thing. Which is never going to work in these days and times. Mm -mm. So, um, yeah, no, I they I told them, and I've they've um, I've had their support, and um, yeah, I've never had to deal with deal with it from that angle. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> it's like, I'm speaking uh, way over here. <laughs> yeah. I'm a. Um, this was so fun. I know. It was. You did, you did such a great job. It was so I, fun to get to know more about I you. I can sit know. back and listen to you guys just talk, man. Well, Cause perfect. Cause good, we, we got <laughs> 10 whole episodes coming out, so that's great. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. No, you guys got a really good dynamic going, a good back and forth, you know? And both Thanks. of you are very intelligent, you know what I mean? And that goes a long way, you know what I'm saying? Thank you so much. Jordan, thank you Literally. so much. We We're so I'm happy to be doing crying. this. Like, that, yeah. that was very nice of you to say. Love I mean that. It. We're, we're really excited to be to be working on something fun. Yeah. Us, so. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. exciting to do something that's like not, this is still porn in a way, but, and I feel like this is a lot more exposing and vulnerable than porn is for me mm -hmm. personally. Like I don't give a fuck who sees me fuck, but here <laughs> I am like, like really being very open with the internet. I feel like I've always been, I haven't been very personal with my fans that much. In the beginning, I was like, I'm an alien. I don't have any name. Like, I don't have a name. I'm right. not a human. I have nothing <laughs> to mm -hmm. say. Here are my tits. And that's mm. it. And I, <laughs> a couple years later, I'm open a lot more. And this is just a whole other level wow. of like Get talking about me. my family. They're all going to yeah. be pissed. What? Yeah. It, 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 yeah. Letting go. Yeah. Like Letting spreading your pussy open on the internet <laughs> is one thing. But like spreading your... <laughs> heart, brain, brain and heart pussy. open on a podcast is yeah. it's intimidating. Yeah. Well, thanks for spreading your brain and heart. Yeah, wide Dred. Open for us. My pleasure. It's definitely my pleasure. No, I, I mean that. I, oh wait, I, I do have it. one question. One then. last final. Hit me. Um, what is the most forbidden sex that you've ever had? <laughs> oh. like, this is a question we ask our. Yeah, our this folks. is one of our favorite questions. Forbidden. As far as like, give me or a, like taboo, any, crazy. any conception of yeah, how you feel about 
like something that felt really naughty or forbidden. Yeah. Like, or like bad or wrong. Well, like, of? for example, I think mine was that I fucked my chiropractor. Oh, okay. You know, something like that. Gotcha. That's like kind of porny, but it wasn't in porn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think I'll have to take a page out of the lifestyle days yes. when there was a um, couple who I would only see them as a couple. And um, I kind of did like a little, I knew it was wrong to mess with this guy's wife because mm. he wasn't around. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't resist it. Oof. Yeah. She was fine? Yeah. And you guys vibed? That forbidden we pussy. Vibed. And we vibed. We vibed in front of him oh. and we vibed even more without him. Oh, that's you hot. Know? That's so hot. So it only, it only went on like two or three, three I think three times. And we both knew we we can't do this, you know. Mm. But the sex was so good. Mm. I mean, we were fucking like she was. In a, they lived in a high rise, and there was a like a terrace. Oh my god! And we would go out on this terrace yes. and just fuck like crazy. Yes. And then you know, just like because when he was there, it was minimalized. You know, it was like here's your time to have fun with my wife, and then all right, hey, all right, Dred, good seeing you. We'll see you next time. This was an all-out blitz. You know what I'm saying? Yes. As soon as I walked in, there was not no exchanging pleasantries. We were right Mo at movie it. Movie sex. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Every time, those three times. So mm -hmm. that is probably it because I knew how fucked up it was, and it was like weighing on me mentally. Like, yo, you gotta cut you, this. You gotta shit stop out. this shit. <laughs> no good is coming out of this. You know, and then here I am, like, you know, we're setting up the next romp. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, so, like an addiction. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would have got worse. Mm. But um, You got we, your three times? You got your fond memories? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck I'm, yeah. I'm and we both knew, look, we, we got to cut it. That's that's it, you know? So Playing with fire. Would, <laughs> Playing with absolute fire. <laughs> absolute fire. Third degree heat. <laughs> you know? So I think that would be it. I'm sure there's others if I think about it long enough, but. That's what mm -hmm. comes to mind. That's all, it's that usually a good, good option. <laughs> yeah, well, it sounds like some fond memories. Oh, it was. So I don't think it was too <laughs> far away <laughs> from the <laughs> frontal lobe there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dred. Thank you so much for coming. We know you're very busy and that you, you know, don't go on just anybody's podcast. <laughs> right. So thank you. My pleasure. Let's do it again. Okay. Let's do it again. Love that. Yay! Oh, that was so, so much fun.